Hello warriors, thanks for joining me for this episode of Stand for AS video. As you all know, ankylosing spondylitis is an autoimmune illness. Our own immunity starts thinking that the sacroiliate joint and the vertebral joints are foreign and starts attacking them. HLA-B27 is one of the genes that makes the immunity feel that the joints are foreign and is responsible for the consequent attack on the joints. A vast majority of AS warriors, almost 70 to 90 percent, are positive for the HLA-B27 gene. It means that they are carrying the HLA-B27 gene. Now, as I said, it is a vast majority to the extent that ankylosing spondylitis has become synonymous with HLA-B27. Does it then mean that HLA-B27 is essential for a diagnosis of ankylosing spondylitis? And is it that one cannot have ankylosing spondylitis without the HLA-B27 gene? Let's have a look. Let us go back to what we all just saw. A vast majority that is 70 to 90 percent of AS warriors are carrying the HLA-B27 gene. What it also means is a minority that is 10 to 30 percent of warriors are having ankylosing spondylitis without the HLA-B27 gene. In fact, there are other genes apart from HLA-B27 which can also make the immunity feel that the joints are foreign and then are responsible for the consequent ankylosing spondylitis. So, HLA-B27 is not necessary for a diagnosis of ankylosing spondylitis and one can have ankylosing spondylitis without having the HLA-B27 gene. In that case, which is the best investigation to diagnose ankylosing spondylitis? It is either an X-ray or an MRI which shows us definitive signs suggestive of ankylosing spondylitis. In fact, we will have a look into details of how we go on to di diagnose ankylosing spondylitis in the next episode. 